Joe Pickett on the top of the box here. Maybe he can find something. Finds Darnell Johnson on the right. Johnson to McLaughlin. Let's see how much of an impact he can make. It's over to Radoni. Top of the box. Nice shot. Jack Radoni. Let's go. Come on. Second goal of the season for Jack Radoni. This was a banger. The first one was kind of a cheesy goal. But this one, outside of the, outside of the box, left-footed, top bins. Keeper could have done a little bit of a better job there. Could have maybe used his top hand to save that one, but... Yes! Jack Radoni has been the most influential player for AFC Wimbledon in this particular affair. Uh, mainly on the side of facilitating the ball, like making that final pass or playing the ball from the right right hand side into the box, but this time he finds an opportunity to strike from 21, 22 yards out. Decent enough pace on it to at least challenge the keeper, but the keeper couldn't he just couldn't deal with the shot I guess I it looked to me like the keeper could have maybe gotten a strong could have maybe got a stronger hand to that but I'm not going to complain 1-0 Wimbledon 89th minute and this happens time in and time out with AFC Wimbledon versus versus Gillingham always a close affair there's always going to be a goal within the last five minutes of the game it's always exciting stuff even though this particular half has not been the most exciting but Jack Radoni and now we're going to sub in Paul Osu for... Who's that Who's that coming off for AFC Wimbledon? Alex Woodyard, okay. Paul Osu for Alex Woodyard, just to give a little bit more... Um, a little bit more fresh legs defensively. And try to... Uh, actually, no, it's not going to be Woodyard. He was coming off initially. But then... Now, it's, yeah, it's going to be Ryan Longman coming off. I feel like that's smart. Just to sub in a uh, midfielder slash... Uh, defensive midfielder slash defender for an... Uh, for a striker there. I was a little surprised that Woodyard was coming off initially. So, <sighs> How many minutes of stoppage time is there? Three. Okay, we got two minutes left. <sighs> Let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah, so like, I, 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 I paused at first because I thought the keeper was going to save it. I was like, yes! I was like that. But, um, Jack Redone on the score sheet, baby. Let's go. Oh. Kind of a botched headed, uh, header clear there. Now, George Dobson at the top of the box to see if he can find somebody. Instead, he takes it on himself. Shot was blocked. Gathered by the goalkeeper. 30 seconds to go here. Gillingham have one more opportunity to create something out of nothing. Uh, and maybe try to get an equalizer here. But nice header away there by, uh, by Will Nightingale. Uh, so now 15 seconds to go here. And they just got to hold strong. They just got to hold strong. Headed away by Nightingale once again. Two clutch defensive headers there from Will Nightingale to uh, to stop the attack from Gillingham. And it looks to me like... Full-time whistle. AFC Wimbledon 1, Gillingham 0. In not a boring game per se. It, it was a decent game. Uh, it's just, it was more of a inconsistent game in terms of action like you had five to ten minutes of of action of pace and then you had five to ten minutes of of a uh, little bit of a break or uh, like a break in the pace of the uh, break in the flow of the game but um overall though afc Wimbledon played decent uh they started off just like in the last game against peter but they started off pretty well the first 10 minutes of the game, actually, the possession stat was pretty even. I mean, AFC Wimbledon, um, they didn't sit back uh, to start off the game and invite pressure right away. They were possessing the ball pretty nicely. They were knocking it around amongst their players. Uh, and I got to say, Jack Radoni found the most uh, touches in that first half, as well as Darnell Johnson, who was actually playing as a right back this time around. A little bit of a defensive change with uh, Ben Hennigan and, and Will Nightingale playing as the center backs. And having Darnell Johnson on the right-hand side actually was not a bad idea. Because Darnell Johnson, uh, his work rate is pretty high. He likes to get up and down the field. And um, not only is his work rate high, but he's also a, a decent player in terms of physicality. He's a very physical player. And whenever uh, he needs to, he will body the defender off to try to... He, he will, like, if, in case he tries to make a run down the right-hand side or, or try to cut it down the, uh, the goal line to try to play a, a ball inside inside the six yard area uh he will muscle his defender off when needed so you know darnell johnson has found the ball a lot on the right hand side as well as jack radoni those two were the most influential players in this particular game i'd say um 
so notably, I have a couple of notes here. Notably, uh, in the 21st minute, that's the first actual point that I would like to make. There was a cross from Darnell Johnson over to Joe Piggott. It was a really nice ball played from around the corner, the right corner of the 18-yard box. It was just slightly too high, just a couple of inches too high. Joe Piggott uh, was at the top of the six there. Had he connected with that header, that would have been 1-0 easily for AFC Wimbledon. And then in the 24th minute, uh, there was a chance from Gillingham. There were like two chances from Gillingham that entire game that were clear cut. One of them coming in the first first half in the 24th minute. Um, somebody from Gillingham found himself at the top or at the uh, right side of the six yard box and played a near post shot. And um, Sam Walker kind of pawned it with his right hand. And it was a uh, it was a decent save. It was a reaction save there. So good work from from uh, Sam Walker, who had a good game by the way. Didn't have to make any crazy saves, but he was very good in terms of uh, collecting the crosses and just taking the pressure off the the Wimbledon back four. Twenty seventh minute, uh, Ryan Longman f uh, forced a turnover from uh, number five from from Gillingham uh, after he bodied the player off around the uh, the 20, 22, 23 yard area. Uh, and it was a two-on-one situation, but he didn't look before trying to play the ball over to Piggott in the middle. Uh, he, he had his head down, and he played kind of a blind pass. He tried to play a near-post pass, but Joe Piggott was on the, um, on the penalty spot uh, area trying to, trying to get the, the little garbage. Uh, try, I'm trying to explain it, but he was, in the, he, was, he was making a trail run, I should say, and he was trying to place a, like a side footer to the near post or a side footer to the far post instead of the near post run. And, uh, yeah, the, the defender just cleared their lines there. So that was a good opportunity. Also, Ryan Longman found himself with another opportunity in the 45th minute on the left-hand side, cutting it inside to his right foot. Good shot, low and hard. Uh, forced a, a decent save from the keeper. Uh, but, yeah, that, that was it for the first half, really. Um, there were a couple of chances, but nothing too crazy. In the second half, Gillingham started off very strongly they, they came out guns blazing the first 10 minutes of that of that half notably with the with uh what's his face uh graham number 10 graham on the right hand side was very dangerous he was knocking it around with kyle dempsey quite a bit those two players are very dangerous for gillingham and uh there were a lot of crosses coming in from graham on that right hand side and that he was probably the most influential player for uh for gillingham coming in as a 45th minute substitute and there was an opportunity um, in the 58th minute where Dempsey and Graham connected with each other. Graham played it to the right-hand side and, and Graham played a, a nice return pass. It was a 1-2 and uh, and uh, Dempsey was making a run. But uh, George Dobson was tr tracking back very quickly and he, he cut off the cross there and it could have been a very dangerous opportunity there for Gillingham. 72nd minute, a uh, chance from Gillingham with a cross coming in from, from Graham on the right-hand side. Um, and... I think forced a save out of out of Sam Walker in that particular instance, but uh, yeah, Graham for Gillingham and Radoni for AFC Wimbledon were the the real threats on the right hand side in terms of playing the balls in, uh, playing the crosses in, and you know after the second seventy second minute, not really not much really happened until the goal from Jack Radoni, baby, Jack Radoni finding himself on the score sheet once again, second goal of the season. Very nice uh, strike there. It was a savable strike, but it was it was good enough to at least challenge the keeper. But hey, won't, I can't complain. It's really nice to see uh, Jack Rodoni's progression throughout the season. I mean, uh, Jack Rodoni started off this. Obviously, this is not his first season in Wimbledon. He's, he he uh, has been playing since last season. Uh, didn't get too many minutes last season, but in terms of this season, the growth that he has experienced has been second to none. I mean, he started off as a fringe starter who would come in every now and again as a starter but then wouldn't play too well. I mean, he would play okay, but he wouldn't be uh, dangerous enough or he wouldn't be, um, you know, he wouldn't be influential enough to, to keep him in the starting lineup, especially considering the uh, the flexibility that we have on the attacking end with uh, Chislett, Longman, uh, Piggott, uh, Ollie Palmer even. Yeah, he hasn't found too many. He hasn't... Uh, played too many minutes but Ollie Palmer is also a, a player that you could look at in case you need a target man but uh Jack Radoni you know in my previous uh my previous recap videos and previous streams I would always kind of knock him for being an inconsistent but now he has been one of our most dangerous players 
Uh, anytime he receives the ball, he's always going to be. He's always going to look to be dangerous. He's always going to look to try to uh, to beat his man or to try to play that final incisive pass. And this this kid went from a bright young prospect to a what's the word for it? He went from a prospect to an actual legitimate player. He is a legitimate player, and I hope that he stays with us for years to come because this man is is going to be a star and uh if he keeps up this form this season and next season i'm sure that a bigger club will will look at him and will pick him up but i hope that he stays with us for as long as possible until then afc wimbledon win the game one nil very solid performance overall from from AFC, afc wimbledon very consistent i'd say uh they didn't have these spells where they played like shit really i did mention that the game itself was a type of game where five minutes ten minutes uh were replete with action and the next five ten minutes were kind of a break but it was just the pay the flow of the game it was i'm referring to the flow of the game i'm not necessarily referring to uh, afc wimbledon's performance so overall very solid performance very important three points for afc wimbledon so um yeah i want to take a look at um the other results around the league to see if uh, Wimbledon will get any help. So it looks to me like Northampton drew nil nil. Actually, they are still nil nil against Rochdale, seventy six minute. Uh, Burton winning two to one against Charlton in the seventy second minute. That's a bit of a surprise actually, because uh, Charlton are a decent side. Um, not the best result for AFC Wimbledon, but I don't expect Burton necessarily to continue their form, even though they won. Three out of their last five, and if they win this one, they'll win four, the, four out of their last six. So that's a bit scary in regards to the um, relegation battle. Sw Swindon 2-2 against Lincoln in the 79th minute. Not too bad there. Bristol Rovers 1-1. Um, so yeah, a lot of draws coming out from, uh, from the teams around AFC Wimbledon. So if this holds up, you know, it's going to be a good result. Uh, it's going to be, you know, two points more than the other teams around them so and they have two games less played they have uh, 28 games played while a lot of the teams around them have 30 to 29 so this is good for AFC Wimbledon I gotta say so yeah it was just a little recap sorry I wasn't able to um I was not able to uh do a live stream earlier because I was busy doing a couple of errands uh but that being said thank you guys for watching this uh AFC Wimbledon versus Gillingham recap see you guys next time